Hi, I'm Ronnie Ochero, and this week we're going to be covering advanced texturing techniques. Following on from the last workshop, we're going to be taking the ACM hammer we created and adding texturing and shading to it in order to make it look more realistic. By the end of the session, you will know how to prepare the model in Autodesk Maya and also how to texture and shade it in Substance Beta. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have a higher poly and a low poly version of your model. Um, with the low poly version, that should be UV'd up um, and with one material overall. Also naming convention wise, make sure they're named similar. With the high poly version, you wanna make sure you have materials used for different sections that you'd wanna mask out. So for me, it was for the handle, the gold and the silver. So it's essentially three separate materials. Once you have that set up, if you go and export each object as an OBJ, uh, just giving it a name kind of that fits, but making sure the name in the Maya scene is the same for both, but with an underscore high for the high one and an underscore low for the low one, just so they can talk to each other in substance. So with that done, if you go into Substance Painter and you open up your low poly version. And that will be used as the main file for your document, essentially, with the model on the left and the UVs and texture progress on the right. So you have all these materials and all these texture settings. And the thing you want to do is go up to the texture settings tab and click on base mesh map, bake mesh maps. Um, with that selected, if you find your high poly version, um, change the resolution to what you want it to be and just tweak some of the settings you have at the moment. So for the ID, instead of vertex color, you'd be material color. Ambient occlusion would knock up the secondary rays so you get more kind of light and shadow going on. Um, you don't need a position map or a thickness map, to be honest. Um, on the common tab, you want to ramp up the anti-aliasing and make sure that the underscroll naming convention you have set up from Maya works in substance. With that done, you just hit bake and what it will do is it will start to bake out all the necessary maps and add in all the information as you're seeing it happen there with the progress bar. Once that's done, you'll see some of the details popping through. Um, from the higher one, which is kind of projected onto your low resolution model. And then you can just start the fun part, which is adding materials. So if you, so for, in me, I was just kind of looking around and playing and seeing what I can put on as a base. There's a lot to, to, to choose from. So I decided probably gold would be a nice kind of base. And in the layers tab, if I switch to that and drag the gold in there, kind of works. There's a nice little base, particularly for the hammerhead because that's all I want it on. So using the mask I set up before, I can assign it just specifically to that spot. So now it's only affected by that. I'd want it to be rusty just because I don't want it to be super shiny and clean. Um, so I apply a rusty material over the top Again, use the color selection to isolate us an area and add a generator. So generators work in a way where they kind of, they behave in different ways towards the, the mesh you have. So in this case, I'd want to make you know, a specific kind of, let's have a play with the curvature. And it works quite well. So all the edges, quite nicely kind of faded out. So it looks like a little bit more wear and tear and scuff marks, which is a good, it's a good look for this. To add another one, again, color selection, add a generator. Mm -hmm. And for this one, I'll go for metal. Maybe dirt just so we lose a little bit more of the, the shininess and we kind of make it a little bit more grounded, which works quite well. Because you still maintain some shininess, but you have a bit more character to it. I'm quite happy with that. I 
Let's make the screen a little bit bigger. So let's just play around with this material to see how that might work. It's not really working the best, especially with the tile situation. So I just get rid of that. Hmm. What can I use? To add another gold? Sure. Just on the rings themselves, just to give them a little bit more of a pop. And again, add another rust over the top. The color selection. In the generator, see what we can put on. So that's okay. It's a little strong because I can't see everything on there. So maybe add a different one. Let's have a play and see what we can come up with. Still a little strong. So we just undo that and just try a different version. Okay, slightly better. So we're just gonna reduce the opacity so it doesn't overpower it, but it's still there. So it just gives like a nice little effect on it. So for the handle, we're gonna try a plastic grid, see how that goes. Just cause it's got a nice little effect. It's kind of a bit too big. So we're going to tile it a little bit more or scale it, should I say, just so it has more of a kind of fabric -y kind of feel to it. Again, use the color selection in order to make sure it's only used in one certain area. So then now that's starting to match up and look quite nice. And again, just something to break it up. So we need to add maybe that. Let's have a play with that. Color selection tool. And add a generator. And what should we play around with? Let's just try this one. And it works overall. It does give it quite, it does blend things together. It's still a bit strong, so we just kind of turn it down. Again, so it doesn't overpower, but it's a nice little over the top effect. So for homework, have a go at it. Try and pick a weapon or anything sci-fi and see if you can model and texture it. Thanks a lot for joining me for this week's session. I'll see you again soon.